Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to show you the best way to classify hyperspectral images in MATLAB. There are many methods we could use to classify hyperspectral images, but in this video, I want to show you the best method. Let's get started. As I said in this video, I want to talk about the best way to classify hyperspectral images in MATLAB. Hyperspectral imaging is an advanced technique used in various fields such as remote sensing, medical imaging, agriculture, and environmental monitoring. It captures spectral information across a wide range of wavelengths, often spanning from the visible to the infrared spectrum. Unlike traditional imaging techniques that capture only three spectral bands, red, green, and blue, hyperspectral imaging collects hundreds or even thousands of narrow and contiguous spectral bands. This high spectral resolution allows for detailed analysis and characterization of the materials present in the imaged scene. In hyperspectral imagery, an end member refers to pure spectral signatures representing the materials or substances present within the scene. These end members are essentially the building blocks of hyperspectral data and can represent various materials such as vegetation, water, soil, buildings, or other objects of interest. The process of identifying and extracting these end members from hyperspectral data is known as end member extraction or spectral unmixing. The spectra of the end members are prominent features in the hyperspectral data and can be used for efficient spectral unmixing, segmentation, and classification of hyperspectral images. In this video, I want to talk about the maximum distance or MAXD, which is an automated algorithm to find the spectral end members from hyperspectral image cubes. This method relies on the idea that the end members are assumed to be vertices of the best fitting simplex that encompasses the data. This algorithm is automatic and requires little user input and also works with all the spectra in the cube and produces the end member spectra directly. These types of algorithm have become widely used in the remote sensing community. One of the challenges with automatic end member determination is the uncertainty of how many end members to choose for a specific data set if there is no prior information as to the number of pure materials present in the image. This algorithm calculates the end members by finding a simplex containing the data based on a geometric representation of the data. The vector lengths of each pixel are calculated and the largest and smallest distance from the origin forms the first two end members. The data is then projected onto a subspace orthogonal to the difference vector. This is done by subtracting the SEDU inverse of the difference vector from the identity matrix. With this, the first and second end members are projected onto one another and form a new point. The furthest point from this new point becomes the next end member and this is repeated until the required number of end members are calculated. These end members are then converted to a gram matrix and determinant of the matrix is used to identify linearly independent sets. Non-zero determinants indicate linearly independent sets. By plotting the volume of each linearly independent set, which is the square root of the determinant, the number of distinct end member spectra can be chosen from the graph to form the final end member set. This figure here shows the process of extracting four end members. Now that the end members are specified, we can use them to classify the hyperspectral image which can be done by performing maximum abundance classification, or MAC. An abundance map characterizes the distribution of an end member across a hyperspectral image. Each pixel in the image is either a pure pixel or a mixed pixel. The set of abundance values obtained for each pixel represents the percentage of each end member present in that pixel. In this example, I will classify the pixels in a hyperspectral image by finding the maximum abundance value for each pixel and assigning it to the associated end member class. In other words, the spectral reflectances present in the hyperspectral image are assigned to one of the end members class according to how similar they are to them. Let's go to MATLAB and perform this classification process. Here's the coding for this problem. First, I want to show you guys how maximum distance algorithm works to extract the end members. So we first specify where our hyperspectral data is located. We change it into double. And here I'm not going to include the last band because it has some NAND values in it. And then here, let's say I don't know the number of end members. I've already run this program and I know there are nine end members, but let's say I don't know that. So I'm going to just put 10 here. But in using a graph that is generated by this program, you're going to see how to specify the number of end members. So first I need to change the hyperspectral image into a matrix form. 
and I'm going to call it iSphere bin. And here I'm going to be extracting the principal component using maximum noise fraction. And then I'm going to also change that into a matrix form, just like here. And then this function here is going to calculate the end members and also the gram matrix. And then here is the ratio of the general gram matrix. And then here I'm going to be plotting the volume estimation. And then this plot here is going to help us specify the number of end members. And then when we know the number of end members, we're going to extract them using this function maxd. But for now, let's say I don't know the number of end members in my hyperspectral data. And I just use 10 as the number of end members. Let's run it and see what happens. And this is the plot of the volume, as you can see, and it's going to go to 0 at 9, which means we have 9 independent end members. And if you want to choose 10, that means this 10th one is a linear combination of these 9. So we have 9 independent end members. And using 10 end members would be meaningless because the 10th one is a combination of the 9 end members here. So using this, I know that I have 9 end members because it's not quite 0 at 8 and it is 0 at 9. So I could use these 9 end members to classify my image. So I could use these 9 end members to classify my hyperspectral image. I have already saved the 9 end members and I'm going to use them to classify the image. But uh, before that, uh, it's worth talking about this function. This is the function that calculates the end members. And you could access the code for this problem using the link in the description section of the video. So there are two functions, hypermnf, which is here and here. We don't need to go through it. I'm going to include the code in the description section as I said. And this is the function that calculates the end members using maximum distance. Again, I'm going to include this in the description section as well. But now that we have extracted nine end members from my hyperspectral image, let's go and classify it. Okay, I have to run this script one more time because we know that we have nine end members and I had to run this function one more time but with nine end members. I'm going to save these nine end members and use them for the classification. Okay, let's go to the coding for classification. I'm going to use two methods. One of them is based on maximum distance and the other one is the one that I chose end members visually. I have already talked about this in one of the former videos in which I chose the end members visually. And I'm going to compare it with maximum distance. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay, the run is complete. This is classification in which I chose the end members visually and this is classification using maximum distance. You could see that when I chose visually, I chose only 7 end members, but according to maximum distance, we have 9 end members. So again, as I said, you could find the code using the link in the description section. I'm going to also include this code. And it's very easy to do the classification once you have the end members. You just have to load them and then estimate abundance and then the class names and then use max to specify which class each pixel belongs to. And then we just plot the output of max and then we use color bar to show the classification map. And I have already talked about this in one of the former videos in which I have talked about how we could classify hyperspectral images in MATLAB. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.